Hi. <laughs> we are going to begin <laughs> with the policy roundtable. I'm sorry we have no microphone, so it's really important to be <laughs> silent so we can listen to, to each other. Uh, so welcome to Barcelona to this uh, policy roundtable uh, about the urban commons. And sorry for the delay for those who were punctual. Uh, we are with a bit of delay due to the plenary beginning late. Um, but here we are. Uh, today we are going to talk about what are the urban commons and how should they be governed. And well, this workshop will present models, different models that go beyond the public-private dichotomy from cities around the world. So we are going to show some initiatives from uh, the citizens' points of, point of view and also some initiatives from some municipalities that uh, are supporting the, the urban commons. And we pretend to be um, an inspiring uh, panel so that we can exchange uh, our experiences and there will be a so the we have our speakers they will talk for 10 minutes each and then we have we will open the to the questions to your questions and and for debate for for the second hour and the first one to speak uh, will be Yolanda Fresnillo and she's from the cooperative Econos uh, from Barcelona and well, first of all, she's going to explain a little bit of, you know, like, you know, she's going to uh, explain like the context for the urban commons for some minutes, and then she's going to explain an initiative that is, is being developed by the Barcelona municipality, and that is quite interesting. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna stand up, because otherwise I have a blank <laughs> here, and... Uh... Um, well, uh, thanks, thanks a lot for organizing this panel, uh, for organizing the whole Fearless City event. Um, as my colleague said, I'm, I'm going to do a very, a very short uh, introduction. I'm not an expert in, in commons and, and I feel a, a bit uh, shame because uh, I share the table with uh, really experts on commons. So. My introduction is going to be really, really short, and I'm going to focus on what is the uh, Barcelona municipality doing at the moment. I am part of a group uh, of two cooperatives who are assessing the municipality on uh, urban commons, uh, and, uh, and we are in the middle of a process that we hope is going to be a, a focus of change in the way that the municipality relates to communities in, in relation to the uh, management of uh, urban commons. Uh, first of all, when, when we talk about, uh, about commons and about urban commons, we're not talking about the, the good itself, we're not talking about the resource itself, but about the social relationship that is established around this, uh, around this uh, good. Uh, so we're talking about communities who are organized around shared resources according to democratic forms of, of governance. Uh, if we don't have these three elements in relation to these resources or to these uh, common goods, we cannot talk uh, about, uh, about commons. Uh, in this sense, the three factors that uh, are part of our um, uh, starting point in, in the work on commons are the existence of, of that resource, a resource that belongs to everyone, that, be, that uh, in, in, in the basis belongs to the community, that it's considered essential and must be preserved from economic uh, profit. Uh, but as I said, the, the existence of this good in itself it cannot be called common. Water uh, is the main um, the, the key common good, and if it's managed by Aguas de Barcelona, we cannot talk about common goods. Uh, therefore, there have to be uh, two other factors. An active community around this, uh, this resource that wants to participate in the management of the resource and wants to uh, participate in a democratic way, uh, meaning not only the democratic way of deciding, but also of accessing, a universal access, and uh, a sustainable use. 
these three characteristics are the ones that uh, form the base of our work or, or, or our approach uh, to the urban commons. When we start wor talk, uh, working on this issue, uh, actually last year with the Barcelona municipality, the first question we ask is why uh, should the municipality of Barcelona do a specific work on urban commons? Um, the, first of all, the first thing was to improve public policy. To, tra to, to do a, uh, a transition from public-private partnerships that have, act or, or even private uh, management of public goods that have been privileged and, until now in this city especially, but I uh, believe in most of the cities where you live, uh, to public community pacts, to public community partnerships. Uh, we believe this is an improvement in terms not only of economic efficiency, but uh, uh, above all of uh, social efficiency. Meaning these public resources should be efficient in terms of the, re of the results or the impacts in the social, uh, from a social point of view. Mm, the second reason was to also to, to have a new perspective on, uh, on, communi on communitary practices. Until now, or until two years ago, uh, most of the pol uh, public policies in the municipality of Barcelona dealing with community uh, practices were, well, we have to deal with it. There is a demand from the community and we have to look for some kind of solution uh, of this conflict. They looked at it as, as if it was a conflict. When a community demanded uh, the management of a public building, the management of a public resource, it was seen as a conflict between the, the, the public and uh, the community. Working on urban commons from the municipality helps us to shift this point of view internally within uh, the municipality. And I'm not just talking about the politicians or the people who are actually no? in government, but especially uh, from the point of view of the, of the los technicos, the technicians, the, the public servants who are working in the municipality and who actually look at these demands from the community as a conflict. And we have to make them think it's not a conflict, it's their right to demand this management, and we have to have a framework not to deal with it, but to fulfill uh, that right. This is, this is a completely change of, of, of uh, perspective in, in the way you look at, this, at these experiences. Uh, and the second was uh, when, when the, the previous municipalities looked at these issues, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm now talking from the perspective of someone who, has, who is in social movements and is dealing with uh, in, in social centers, uh, was to uh, yeah, abo avoid the, the conflict and publicly not acknowledge our work, but uh, express how well they dealt with this conflict. Look, we, we mm, los aplacamos. <laughs> well, we control that. No? When we get to, to the press, it's, we control that demand. What we have to do now is to acknowledge the, the, the social uh, importance and the social value of these collective practices and of self-organization within the management of public resources. Uh, of course, also improvement of democratic quality, uh, fostering citizenship uh, labs, uh, creating, uh, empowering communities to not just manage the, that resource, but to self-organize and create a political body uh, where before maybe there was a, a non-organized uh, community. Um, if we want to um, transit to a democratic city, not to a smart city, but to a democratic city, uh, we need communities that are more politically concerned, that are more participative, and that feel more co-responsible with the political policy, with the public policy. Um, I'm going to be a, a bit faster. Um, it's a little bit related to what I said before, but uh, we have to start working on a new form of doing and being public administration. 
the, and, and working with, poli with urban uh, uh, commons help us to start developing that. It's not limited to urban commons, but if we want, at, at the end, uh, a community management of water and of other resources, we need to start practicing with things that are more um, sustainable within the actual structure of the, of the institution. Uh, and not only that, but to, to, co to, to go from that conflicting point of view, from uh, a point of view where uh, community management is confronted to public management, to another one where public community management is actually something that adds uh, to, the, to the, the democratic city. And finally, there was another reason, which, was, which is very practical, and at the end is the one that is helping us the most to advance the program within the, within the municipality, which is that there, there was a need to put some order to the way the municipality dealt with those community demands. Uh, to s regulate and systematize the way the administrations make sessions of public buildings to, uh, to um, social entities. Uh, until now, it was a very personal relationship. If you knew that political person, or if you knew uh, the, that public servant that could help you get access to that resource, you had access to that resource. It wasn't a transparent way of dealing with things. If you had the strength, the social strength, to mobilize hundreds of people and occupy Cambatlio and reclaim uh, a session to the community of Cambatlio, you could do that. But if you were a small community in a peripheral neighborhood who actually had the same demand but you didn't have that strength, unless you knew someone in the municipality, you couldn't deal with that. You couldn't do it. So there was a need to uh, structure those demands, and this is what is most welcome from the structure of the, of the municipality. Uh, I didn't do that. <laughs> uh, I have to apologize for the language, because I translated it yesterday night. And I'm, I'm just realizing there are so many mistakes in the translation. But anyway, um, where, we, where we stand or where we stood in Barcelona when we uh, began this work, uh, there was already some work. There, were, uh, uh, there was a context of pro proliferation of uh, community demands uh, that had been fulfilled during uh, the last 20 years. Since the 90s, uh, the municipality of Barcelona created this uh, gestión cívica, civic management policy, where they uh, they gave the management of uh, public facilities, especially uh, cultural facilities, what is called centros cívicos, civic centers, social, like so, like institutional social centers, to uh, <coughs> to communities, and the communities organized. Uh, could, could act, are actually managing that. Uh, Ateneo Popular de Nou Barris is one of the most uh, no, well-known uh, examples. If you have the chance while you're in Barcelona, I would highly recommend you to go to Nou Barris and to go to Ateneo Popular de Nou Barris and, and, and look at where the demands from the community have gone uh, within this existing policy. There was also an existing sort of framework of session of public patrimony called Pla Locals but as I said, it, was, it wasn't well structured. It wasn't well followed from the, from the, stru from the institutional structure. Uh, some people, some, uh, so, some districts followed it, some districts didn't follow it, some made uh, pacts within this framework, some made pacts with, uh, outside this framework. And then there was, a, from 2012, it was this plow weeds, it's a, the sesh, a, a policy of session of, of municipal plots that actually worked uh, pretty well, but had a lot of limits. So we uh, start analyzing these three policies and seeing how we could widen these policies, how we could go further from these policies, uh, fulfilling the demands that the communities were making, not only within this, but also outside uh, this, uh, these frameworks. And we have started working on a project, on a, on a program called 
citizen's patrimony. This is the way I have translated it. It's patrimonio ciudadano, patrimonio ciudadá. Um, taking some of the experiences from the existing policies, but also uh, trying to support and to uh, acknowledge other experiences that were outside uh, these policies, meaning that we were widening the scope of experiences where uh, the municipality could, uh, could work. What is uh, citizens' patrimony? We actually call it Patrimonio Ciudadano de Uso y Gestión Comunitaria. Uh, citizens' Patrimony of Community Use, or, or Community Use and Management. I don't know if that's the correct translation. Uh, the objective was to generate, or is to generate, a new institutional regulatory framework uh, that allows the development of these urban commons, uh, that support the development of uh, these urban commons, and that even fosters this development. Um, recognizing and focusing on self-management and community experiences. Uh, the new framework should not focus on the session of the management or of the use to the communities, but on the recognition of the rights of these communities to have access and to have access to the management and to the decision making within uh, these resources. Which resources are there? We are, for, uh, until now, uh, constricted to uh, public buildings, patrimonio inmobiliario, uh, real estate by, uh, owned by the municipality, and uh, lots also municipal lots, voids, urban voids. Um, <coughs> and we want to focus on the democratic management of, this, uh, of, of these resources. Uh, this is difficult because a lot of demands come from uh, organizations, from NGOs, that are quite far from democratic uh, <laughs> organizational cultures. Uh, therefore, this is, this is an aim. We want to go there, but it's not going to be like that at the beginning. Uh, there are uh, different values. At, at this point, I have to say, these are the principles or the values that with which we are working now. This, we are now at the moment of, translate, uh, of, trans, of um, discussing all of this with different experiences, with different communities. Uh, and this can change completely. This is the proposal we made in this assessment to the municipality, and therefore now there is a work of uh, reshaping it and, and, and seeing if it fulfills the demands of these communities. Uh, so they have to be projects or proposals of general community or territorial interest, uh, that the relationship should be focused on a mutual trust and on co-responsibility, it's not, it's not the administration gives you the whole management, but it's, we have to create a relationship and a trust relationship, uh, not a police relationship. Therefore, there has to be a, a, a way of dealing with things uh, with a lot of transparency. To have trust, we need uh, transparency, uh, and we need publicity of uh, everything that is done in those resources, but also everything that is done in the in the side of the municipality. Uh, <coughs> of course, that it complies with human rights, equality, and against uh, discrimination. That it's sustainable. That the projects are sustainable, not only from an economical point of view. That also have to be sustainable from an economic point of view. For example, in this issue, we are trying to um, find ways where the municipality can uh, put some resources in those experiences that do not um, affect the independence of the experience, but also allow economical uh, activities, uh, like having a bar, for example, and so allow licenses to have those activities so they can self um, finance uh, their own projects, but this has to be in, 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 in within the pact. Uh, but also social and environmental uh, sustainability. 
uh, adaptation and differentiation is there are very different experiences, very different communities. We cannot have a framework, a, a, a unique path for everyone. It has to be adapted uh, to every uh, situation. It's not the same Cambadillo that a small community in uh, a peripheral uh, neighborhood that has not this uh, strength. And to uh, recognize the autonomy, the autonomy of these of these communities. And, and I finish with this. What we are doing now, we are working on a new set of criteria, of indicators, and of an evaluation process that is focused not on uh, compliance with some quantitative objectives. How many activities did you do? How many people did came to the to the to this space? But to a sort of a, a social balance, un balance social. Um, in, inspired by the uh, social balance from the uh, economic uh, and cooperative, the cooperative uh, economy. An institutional body within the, the, the municipality that decides and promotes uh, patrimony sessions and patrimony experiences, uh, citizens' patrimony experiences. Uh, composed by different uh, different representatives from districts, from areas, from the patrimony area, from the uh, legal services area within uh, the community. So all the demands go through that uh, body, and that body has to follow that set of criteria in terms in, in order to uh, cons concede uh, that uh, those, those sessions. But also a participatory body with the participation of the communities that ensures that this policy is well uh, developed. Uh, we were inspired by Naples in this, in this sense. Uh, and a renewed pact, un nuevo convenio. A renewed pact that responds to communities' demands and, but also to the public due diligence. So it's not arbitrary. Uh, when, while doing this work, we uh, we revised different paths <coughs> with different communities and with different experiences. They were all different. So we realized, depending on the strength you have, you have a better pact or a worse pact. And this cannot be like that. So we are going to, we are working now on writing, actually, a new, uh, a new pact. And to finish with that, we have uh, two main uh, challenges. The first one is uh, this work has been done, has been done internally until now. We have got some contacts with the communities, but now it's the moment to uh, give that to them and, be, uh, and, 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 uh, and see if they, can, if they want to, to take ownership of the, of the proposal. Uh, this is the main, the main challenge. We know that some of the communities want to do something like that, but we don't know how they are going to react to the actual proposal and to find some legal answers to some obstacles that we still have. For example, the licenses for certain economic activities within the public spaces, the time bound, the Spanish uh, regulation now uh, says that there can be a maximum of four year session. We, we, cannot, we cannot work on that on, on four year framework. We have to have a wider uh, what are time bounds? And, and other small, small challenges. Um, this is, a, this is a, a summary. We have, for example, the whole criteria. I'm, I'm just showing it to say the work is, is wider. <laughs> but, but I'm going to finish with this. And if you have any questions afterwards, you can ask me. Thank you. Now we have Sylvia Frederiksson. Uh, she comes from Paris and she's going to present the initiative Remix the Commons. Yeah. Sh should we try the technology? No. Uh, it, it's, it's working, okay. it's only okay. for record. Yeah. Okay. 
Hello everyone, thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm here for a, a group of people, uh, most of them are in this room, so uh, yeah. So uh, it's an opportunity for us uh, to speak here with the French community. So our project is called Remix the Commons. Uh, it's an in intercultural initiative to contribute to make uh, the culture of commoning stronger in the economic, social and political practices by the collaborative production of documents and tools for the commoners. So, um, yeah. So, more than documenting the processing, we have also many activities like uh, art of commoning. So the idea is to make grow up uh, the consciousness of cit citizenship uh, engagement. Workshops, we're uh, working uh, in France and in Paris on, on long-term projects uh, with um, the idea of promote cultural <coughs> rights and commons. Um, we are also uh, trying to, to work with uh, game processes to open the, the process to a large public. And we're making also many work uh, with uh, the idea of uh, make creating narratives around commons. Uh, we are working also uh, in a in a big. Uh, we are making a big work of documentation process. We are producing uh, videos, papers. Um, remix the comments is it, uh, really uh, interesting because it, it mixes uh, the academic and the researcher uh, with the practitioner. Um, and we're working at different scales, re really local scales, uh, uh, in uh, several areas in Paris, but also in a European uh, scale uh, with the European Common Assembly uh, that uh, starts uh, the previous year. Um, so as a practitioner, as I am a designer, I'm part of this team and I will make a focus on one project uh, that we are developing since uh, 2015. This project uh, is called uh, Atlas of Charters of Urban Commons. Um, our motivation with this project project uh, was to have a more complete vision of the liquid me mechanism that activates the commons and the communities. So the idea was to study governance, rules, norms, relation with the law and the public authority um, that are complex, uh, complex uh, uh, subjects. So the idea was to understand how we can create and ma maintain this uh, uh, charters of uh, urban commons. So the question we asked uh, ourselves was could we co-build tools and methodologies of interpretation of the liquid mechanism of the urban commons um, that we are named charters? Uh, we consider the governance of the commons as one of the most interesting topics in the context of activism and change common based because the produ production of rules and liquid mechanism uh, is, uh, uh, we think that it's the core of the commons and we, we need to open the black box of these charters. So uh, our project uh, um, is really close to many projects that are no uh, more uh, that, have, that have more uh, visibility. So as an example, we have uh, in Seoul sharing cities, or in Bologna co-cities, uh, in Barcelona uh, city as a common, or in Totnes uh, tra transition town. So what is our approach? Um, our first work is about uh, documentation. So we started to make an inventory of charters of urban commons available on Zotero, uh, a tool for managing libraries. We will use a semantic web uh, to interconnect this collection with other resources uh, through a common vocabulary. We have done an effort of creating uh, grids uh, to understand these charters, starting by looking the charters through the following categories. So we try to, to check the definition, the relation with the technologies, um, the kind of the type of partnerships, the story and the narratives that 
we develop around the, the commons and uh, the processes uh, of uh, empowerment and emancipation. So, what kind of uh, lessons uh, can, we, can we learn? Uh, what are the chapters telling uh, us about? So, we can highlight some indicators. Uh, we have six indicators here. So, um, the first one is economic and cultural issues in relation to a resource, competition of synergy between partners, the cultural partner mo mobilized by the uh, man-nature relationship, the dynamic of organized social relations, the, vi the viability of political organization, and then behaviors of actors in action. So, in, in practice, in action, uh, how can we build this culture of commons, of urban commons, and how can we activate uh, the, the work uh, around this, uh, uh, this liquid uh, work uh, that we've called finally uh, tactical chattering. This idea is to uh, process like uh, um, like um, urban, uh, tactical urbanism, uh, the idea is to work uh, with small initiative that we can repeat and repeat with different kind of uh, processes. So I want to uh, highlight three uh, processes that we are working with. Um, the, um, and these processes have, have, are part of a toolbox for a governance and urban, urban commons. So the first one is uh, an analyze. Um, we work on, uh, we started to design a set, a set of conditions for the urban commons. Uh, it's a, a work of writing the tactical ch chartering manifesto. The second one is a, a, a game that we can experiment uh, all together. We, we bring uh, some of them here. So Mathieu has created a game card. It's called Cards in Common. It's a real game, but it's also a process for opening discussion on the commons within the community. I guess that uh, we can better understand the commons if we use the, the indicators already mentioned as a framework. And the last, um, last tactical, the, the last process, uh, is the process that, are on, that, that I, I developed in Paris um, with um, the community uh, and uh, another NGO called uh, Open Knowledge Foundation. Uh, the idea is to work also on uh, literacy, commons literacy, but also data literacy, because we think that uh, uh, data is uh, one uh, common that we, we have to work on. Um, and so we develop uh, that data expedition uh, with the idea of, uh, um, of working in, uh, with the data literacy pipeline, so how people are uh, able to understand their, their own uh, uh, capacity and empowerment with that work with data. So uh, this process of uh, data literacy is for us an, another kind of collective di diagnostic. So finally, um, well, thanks for the community, community for our um, this work uh, we, we've made together, and it's clear that the, the charter and the urban common that we started to work on with uh, the Atlas of uh, Common Charter, that finally this tactical are more than paper and charters, and we have to develop uh, uh, practices and different strategy uh, to involve people in, in this uh, uh, commons literacy. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Th thank you, Silvia. So uh, now it's uh, Giuseppe Micherelli from uh, Massa Critica uh, from Naples. So he's going to explain his experience.
Okay, thank you to everybody. Uh, I will uh, make a lecture, but you can read it. So maybe if my pronunciation is not so good, you can understand better reading, right? So, <laughs> is, is, is there something uh, more uh, great than a panel point? Um, I will speak about a new model of governance of commons, the collective and urban civic use. This is a form of direct administration of public space led by citizenship without the mediation of any association or other legal entity. A premise is important. This experiment that is done in Naples does not outcome from the municipality or great academic. With them, we have done a very important comparison during the years but our social movement that after streets have taken places, occupied them, and after they have taken codes, pen and books, and have made political and legal theory on their practices. <coughs> so maybe it's not, a good, it's not a good theory, but it's a bottom-up one. I will reason in three points. The first one is the, back, the background is the fight around commons and the growing up of claims on urban spaces. This is a, a little bit different fight from the battle of public water, isn't it? What are these urban commons? Abandoned ancient building, barracks, brownfields, and other monumental real estate in our cities doesn't exist as common without the movement and the citizen who take care of them. This is not a slogan, in my point of view. This is a precise theoretical and political perspective. To understand the point, just look to the capitalistic order. Today, the management is often much more powerful than property. And the management is the place where commons are exploited and destroyed. So, if we want to defend commons, we must imagine an alternative governance. But this give a lot of juridical and theoretical problems. How the management of a water company can be equal or similar to the self-governance of a community in a urban space. <coughs> so I think that we must link governance to category of commons. And I propose, for this reason, two types of commons linked with two different types of governance system. We can call the first one necessary commons, and the second one, emerging commons, where urban commons are true. We use this differentiation in Naples too, right? The first type, necessary commons, are some goods that are necessarily in common, such as water and other natural goods. But there are also, and this is important, artificial goods. Think about life-saving medicine and the fight that we have to make to make medicine like common. So obviously, we are against private management of cooperation of this kind of uh, commons, right? But in our fight, it's a little bit more difficult to distinguish their governance from the public one. The difference is that in uh, necessary commons, we must insert rules of participatory democracy. Because they are goods related to fundamental rights, on a large scale, the best you can imagine is Porto Alegre model or similar. But this participatory democracy is not enough. We have to imagine other uh, way to uh, make participatory democracy. And so we have the second type, emerging commons. There are commons with emerge, such as from the use that is claimed from the bottom. We did not walk around the city and say, look at that abandoned building, it's an urban commons. We don't do that. Not all abandoned places are perceived as commons, but it's difficult to translate this care of people in a juridical way. So, this brings us to the second point. How and why create new institutions? With an act of institutional subversion, we invented a new legal tool. Maybe you don't like this, but in our world, if you have 
if you not have a legal form, you doesn't exist. So after, but the existing form are not similar to us. So we have only one choice, invent a, to, to invent another one. After three and a half years battle, we convinced the city council to recognize it. From May 2012 to June 2016, at least five resolutions, which we imagine and work, work, work sorry, in a collective work, have extended this kind of governance to eight spaces, covering today an area of about 40,000 square meters in uh, uh, square meters in different parts of the city. These places were occupied in origin. But what is it? This, what is it this regulation is? So, in short, uh, imagine a little constitution. The regulation sets how to use the space, how decisions are made, how to acquire the decisional status, with which guarantee bodies, this is important. And the decision model is based, as you can imagine, on a complex assembly democracy system but it's different from a private statute of a single association. Because it's not the regulation for members, but it's projected outwards. It's projected versus people. So it's not a pact between public and private. It's direct administration. So we imagine a new way for translating our idea of common use into legal form. To do so, at the same time, we tried to make it understandable and recognizable by existing law. We then wrote a regulation inspired by CDQs, that is a, an ancient institution still enforcing Italy. But you have something like that even in Spain. Think about Montes Comunes and Monte Bicinales in Galicia, for example. So take from already exist and imagine what is now, today, the, the common use? It's not on the so-called right of Legnatico, fishing on common land, but it's all other thing. Use means of production, use spaces together. What we do in a lot of special space all around our fearless city. So, this is the last point. Uh, Nuri Butchkin say an important thing that people is able to create their own institution. Differently from his point of view, we use a juridical form. So we have to ask why we use a juridical form, which is our target. The best way to overcome the legal order is my point of view is to change it. Doing this in the way and with competence that he doesn't expect conflict in the district together with new municipalist instrument. This is how Massa Critica acts. This approach changed our mode of political fight. It depends on point of view. It doesn't make us domestic animal for urban regeneration. You know, there is a lot uh, of experience that probably make uh, this normalization of social conflict. We think, on the contrary, that with a legal recognition, you need less time to defend yourself, and you have so more time to make social conflict. Legal strategy help us even for another reason. Uh, in Naples, we, we did not build a municipal coalition for winning the election. But we, give, we gave our ideas to one of these coalitions, led by the Alcalde de Magistris. And in this way, uh, it's growing up something different from a simple alliance. There is a contamination of languages, prospective competencies. Uh, we were lucky because we, we found a brave interlocutor. And the most important thing when you make this, for, this kind of um, legal uh, strategy is that uh, uh, and I say this because here we are in a city where you have an alcalde important, right? It's different because it's linked directly with the social movement. But the most important thing is that the administration say, okay, I help you to make what you are thinking about. 
I say to you what is possible and what is not, and we think how to change this dichotomy of possible and not possible, make what is not possible possible. So, I, I'm going to finish. Uh, we, I think that we need to practice uh, use in common even writing new rules. The juridical is not just to use only during strategy defense, like in a judicial action. Juridical is an indispensable element for any constituent power. Declaration of civic use was written in workshop, in assembly, and is questioning every day our identity. Right give you to the opportunity of a reflexive work on yourself, of how to be really and always horizontal, feminist, democratic, and out of market. Because it's simple to say, it's more difficult to be. And the legal level even help us to another important thing. Yolanda told in her introduction, uh, is a jump from the particular level to the universal one. If there is somewhere in our cities a place that have not, have not the powerful of make 100 people to come in an abandoned place and occupy it, a new legal instrument can help them to claim. So, all over in the cities, we are, we, there are occupied places. Little association that make a lot of real interesting experience. So, for this reason, these spaces are so precious. They are democracy lab. More thousand of self-government uh, self government labs. And this is our labs, or uh, uh, these are labs, are incubators of hope, tolerance, openness, and creativity. We may consider them as facultutian practice of freedom. So be brave. If we can manage places for several years, we can imagine even to write new kind of rules. And these new, new rules have to be the new institution of the next revolution. Thank you. turn of Maya Fuster. Maya Fuster, she, she comes from Barcelona and she's going to explain about the initiative of ProCommuns.net. Uh, panel. So in my intervention we are going to move into how far the new technologies and internet has also uh, opened up a new trajectory of regarding the commons. So what is uh, known as uh, digital commons. Uh, first I'm going to introduce briefly uh, what digital commons and commons collaborative economy refer to and later on I will explain uh, Bar Barcelona City uh, commons uh, Commons Collaborative Economy Plan. So there is a specific action inside of the Barcelona City Council regarding the possibility of promote this modality of uh, production in the city. Uh, so the guidelines regarding how to approach uh, Commons Collaborative Economy from Barcelona uh, is one, is that Commons, my, Commons modality of Collaborative Economy might be the more beneficial for the city and second, that uh, here we have an opportunity to actually also innovate from how uh, uh, policies are being developed and so be guided by the principle that uh, we need collaborative politics for a truly collaborative uh, economy. So what, what do I refer when I say about commons collaborative economy or digital commons? This refers that when, when uh, uh, internet started, which is almost uh, now, we almost half a century. I mean, it's not like that new. 
Uh, so when the, the new technologies started, it uh, start to emerge certain communities supported by digital spaces uh, that collaboratively were producing uh, resources and they were actually managing these resources. So in the same uh, spirit that uh, Yolanda intervention or the previous intervention regarding communities at the urban level uh, managing together a, a resource, here we have uh, uh, communities supported by digital spaces in order to collaboratively build and uh, uh, manage resources. The, the, the first uh, cases to appear were the communities around the production of of uh, software, uh, in which the communities were collaborating for producing uh, software that now actually is the predominant model in the software industry. So it has become a very successful modality. Uh, it's not only more democratic, but also it has proved to be more efficient and, and is actually the dominant in certain uh, industries like software. Then we have also the case of Wikipedia as a community of people uh, contributing to assure access to, to knowledge and the building of an encyclopedia. These were the, the first typology of communities uh, to emerge and the modality of commons in the sense of uh, involving the communities in the production of the resources in the online uh, uh, sphere was the predominant, uh, uh, actually, initially. Uh, we have uh, Eleanor Ostrom as describing uh, actually how far uh, common uh, modality of production is, has been, is very efficient at the, at the um, uh, management of, of uh, natural resources like fishing, water, and uh, she, she, get, she, she <coughs> obtained the economic Nobel Prize in 2009 as uh, showing how far actually uh, common modality of, of uh, natural resources is much more efficient. Uh, in certain cases, like uh, how far commons uh, can be a, a better mode than not state provision or uh, market provision. Later on, Johai Benkler actually observed how far this modality was uh, uh, emerging also through the internet uh, sphere, as I uh, explained. So uh, there is this uh, approach that commons is a third model distinct from the market and the state as communities self-manage and producing the resources. Uh, but I also want to challenge this perspective because actually if commons is the third modality where, regarding state and market, where is the nature? Where is social reproduction? Where is care work? And I think we have actually to question this and in incorporate it into a much more broader uh, recognition of several modalities of production. And here for me, community work would be also common in, in the sense of regarding previous intervention. So what is commons collaborative economy? It refers to the collaborative production of capital and labor by a decentralized community of self-governed uh, 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 contributors supported by a digital platform. This is based on an, this is, it's based on a new form of property and also a new form of public economy because it's, it's a for, form of economy in which a community of, uh, of uh, uh, citizens produce a resort. They own it collaboratively by the type of license they adopt, they own it. Uh, in the sense of there is a, a collective subject owning the resource, but at the same time they, uh, they leave it as a public uh, good because it's in conditions of uh, open access. This refers like, for example, in the case of Wikipedia in which the community developed the resource, the license uh, 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 recognized the collective development of the resource, but at the same time even people who didn't contribute to it uh, have access to, to, to this resource. There has been an expansion of commons collaborative economy from the very first cases of, of, uh, pr uh, of uh, proprietary of, of um, software, of free software and free and open source software communities that were the first of appear, like uh, Linux and Wikipedia. We have actually identified how far this modality of digital platforms supporting collaborative production of communities is being expanded. And, uh, and we have actually identified this represent 33 areas of production from the very, like, uh, the larger one is uh, actually free software because it's, it's the one which are much more uh, spread. Uh, but we uh, have also uh, identified collaborative production about the production of physical uh, materials, like, for example, open, open ecology, which is the collaborative production of um, agriculture um, uh, machines. 
regarding the open design or the collaborative management of uh, urban spaces or collaborative uh, uh, caring of, of, uh, of kids. No? So there is this expansion from a very starting point much more focused about immaterial knowledge-based resources to actually now are arriving to the city and it referred also to uh, physical spaces and, and the fa physical fabrication of, uh, of uh, tools. And with this, I want to visualize that Commons Collaborative Economy and this element of the production through a pla digital platform is something that is very ubiquitous that might arrive to any area of economical activity. Most of almost all type of economical activity can actually be supported or converted into a, 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 a or by, by a digital platform. And this is something, it's not about a sector somehow, but it's a mode of production that is expanding through uh, 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 many uh, areas and might be the economical paradigm uh, emerging. But there is not only like this expansion, but there has been also a hybridification of the model. There has been several waves in which there has been a, a capitalist adoption of this mode of production, adopting some of its characteristics, but taking care, like not uh, uh, adopting others. I'm not going to go into this, but there has been like, uh, from, the, start, from the, the 40 years of the model through the internet, there has been several waves in which, uh, 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 in 2005, for example, with the web 2.0, uh, from Silicon Valley emerged a, a first wave of adopting so certain modalities and now with the Airbnb Uber type of mode we have seen another wave in which uh, uh, multinational are, are adopting this modality of production by uh, 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 not taking uh, uh, the commons uh, dimension of it. So when, what actually differentiates the commons collaborative economy from the what is known the unicorn modality or the corporate modality of, co of collaborative production through a digital platform is the type of, uh, of governance and the type of uh, economical enterprise behind while commons are based on foundations and uh, uh, small uh, or cooperative or small little enterprises that has a democratic governance uh, behind. Obviously, Airbnb and Uber, they are also digital platforms, but there is any kind of democratic involvement of the community into the management of the resource. Uh, from the uh, starting uh, Open Commons model of Wikipedia, and uh, also is the case of Goteo, which is a crowdfunding uh, platform, now we have seen a new model emerging, commons-oriented model called a platform cooperativism, that is based on cooperatives actually owning the, the platforms that they this is the case, for example, of a smart IV. It's a cooperative of uh, freelance in the cultural sector, which they organize through a digital platform in order to provide the resource. Now there are 80,000 people doing this in Belgium and 900 people here. So with this, we are seeing how far the, the social and collaborative economy and cooperative tradition can scale enormously, much more than we have seen until now. So there is an element of scalability that is very connected to uh, 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 this uh, uh, modality and how far open new horizons in a, in a dimension that we couldn't expect it before of uh, uh, scaling democratic, uh, econ economic democratic uh, growing uh, through this model. So, so as I was saying, first there is a distinction on the type of, of governance and type of uh, uh, democratic involvement on the community, but it's also important to consider the type of technology. Because the type of technology or knowledge uh, uh, policy also frame the governance of in a, in a digital environment. If the, if the platform is not based on open source and you don't see what the platform actually is doing, there is a lack of transparency and there is a lack of possibility to actually intervene into it. So it's very important that the, that the platforms are also based on, on free and open source software uh, pr uh, um, programs and not proprietary software. And they are also based on open data and generated open commons and they are not, uh, instead of being based on closed data. Uh, uh, so, uh, with, uh, um, with this, uh, we, we are also developing, it's very difficult to, uh, in the, in the uh, public opinion, uh, uh, to, to stress this differentiation because uh, uh, Airbnb and Uber also present themselves as collaborative and it's difficult to point. Yeah, no, that's not the same. There are different models. This is common collaborative economy. It's really collaborative economy, but actually Uber and Airbnb, it's not. So we are developing a, some kind of um, 
a common uh, balance of the collaborative economy, pointing of, of what is actually the characteristics that might be there in order to distinguish uh, a common collaborative economy from one that is not. Uh, but there is not only differences in, as I say, regarding the type of governance, the type of technology, and the type of knowledge that is important to make present in order to stop the, 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 the um, um, uh, what is the name of when, when commons are being uh, the um, enclosement? So in order to, sh to stop the enclosement of common uh, collaborative economy and common production to the internet and how far we have gained a great collective capacity to generate commons to the digital uh, sphere, in order to stay this uh, uh, enclosement, we have to make clear what is the distinction and also how to preserve it. But there are not this, this type of distinctions. There is also very distinct how this commons collaborative economy relates to the political institutions and how uh, which horizons of political uh, uh, organizing they bring. If we see about the, the unicorn, Uber, and Airbnb type of political system, they are reinforcing, we see the, what is called the double self-regulation disempowering. They don't, don't disempower the communities, they disempower the communities because they don't involve them in the, in the governance, but they disempower also the state because they, they ask for the delegation of the regulation of the collaborative economy by the corporations. This is what they, they uh, discuss. They have a strong uh, lobbyist uh, 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 forces in order to assure this. There are problems of revolving doors. The, the president of the European Commission, uh, Barroso, went to work for uh, Goldman Sachs, which is the main funder of Uber. And I, I could make a very long list about how many revolving doors are now been happening with this. And they also create a, a glass ceiling for the commons modality don't to grow. Like it's not that commons there is no creativity or, or business model in order to operate. It's that there is a structural glass ceiling. The same that the same type of modalities that doesn't allow the women to grow. There is a structural glass ceiling for the commons collaborative economy not to grow. And, 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 and we have to uh, uh, also uh, have this present. In contrast, the commons modality of collaborative economy open up the possibility of collaborative polities. Uh, involving the collaborative dynam dynamics into the, actually the definition of the regulation of collaborative economy. There is also the possibility of what we call communication, an alternative to privatization, that the uh, public administration actually involves citizens in producing commons for the provision of public services without entering into a pro privatization process but guaranteed the public uh, uh, dimension. There is also the possibility of provision of collaborative public service uh, provision. So it opened up a really uh, very uh, interesting and powerful uh, uh, political frame. And in this regard, Barcelona is trying to actually take advantage of these possibilities through the Commons Collaborative Economy Plan. Uh, first, uh, to say that in Barcelona there is a long tradition of Commons Collaborative Economy. We mapped 1,000 experiences in the city, and there are some that are very famous and, and recognized internationally. And uh, uh, regarding the, how to do the policies and how to approach the policies about collaborative economy, the first thing that the City Council did was to create an ecosystem for defining the policies. So, and this is a, an area like the common. The collaborative eco economy is an area particularly open for collaborative politics because there is the knowledge about co-creating. No? So uh, there has been we have been creating uh, uh, several layers of an ecosystem to define the policies of collaborative economy by the city council. The first le level it was created is called Barcola, which is a working group uh, meaning Barcelona Colabora, and it's. It's composed by 30 representatives of the city, of platform cooperatives or commons collaborative economy like Wifinet, Goteo, uh, Amical Wikipedia, or, or uh, uh, many other experiences in the city which uh, somehow are bringing about uh, uh, the perspective about what type of policies uh, uh, might be more beneficial. Uh, and, and Barcola is composed by these 30 uh, 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 plaza cooperatives and commons collaborative economy initiatives in the city, and then representatives of the city council, mainly through the uh, Social and Solidarity Economy Commission. And together, through telegrams and through um, um, a monthly meeting, 
uh, uh, together defining the, the plan on collaborative economy by the city council. Then we also organized it Procomus last year in March, and, and it was a forum, 400 people came, in order to uh, uh, provide a policy recommendation. It ended up, it ended up with a, a resource that I think it can be very useful for other cities, which is a Procomus declaration with 120 policy recommendations for administration, in which it says how the administration can actually support this modality of uh, economy, and uh, we are going to have a new Procomums event that is going to be the 27th and 28th of June, that the people from Bar Bar Barcelona and Catalonia are very invited to come. Uh, and, and also, uh, we use a, a web, the City in Barcelona, which is a participative democracy web of the City Council, in order to also arrive to citizens that are not so much involved uh, in this sector to also have something to say about collaborative economy. Last, we created an inter-area transversal municipal group. We have to understand that co collaborative economy is a very transversal policy. It affects mobility, it affects housing, it affects uh, promotion policies. So you, know, you need also internally in the city council to actually uh, coordinate the different uh, actors. This is the different mechanism <coughs> that we use for the co-creation of the Barcelona City Council plan. Uh, we, another very relevant element is to connect the, the city council action with research. So we created a partnership with a set of uh, universities and particularly through European <laughs> projects in order to define the, and, and develop pilots. And this is very important because you need, you can ha there is a, a lot of possibility of experimentation, of new solutions. And sometimes in a research frame and a European project frame, you can uh, experiment much more. So uh, it's important to have a, to create a, a field of experimentation for uh, 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 designing the policies, connecting with research. And this has been the, the actions that has been actually developed. First, very important, increase awareness. This is something that the administration can do. Increase awareness about the Commons Collaborative Economy as a model. Create connection. The first meeting we organized for, for this group, Barcola, of representative of the sector, many of them didn't, didn't know each other. It was the first time they know each other. You know? So we are trying also to create significant connections. For example, connection between the cooperative tradition and the uh, platform cooperativist modality in order to uh, help uh, cooperatives innovate also through this model. Second, we are trying to see the approach of big events happening in the city shift the policy perspective like the Smart City Congress and the Mobile World Congress which happened in Barcelona, which is the two very big technological events. We are trying to shift, <coughs> shift the, the, the approach to much, much more bottom-up and much more uh, um, connected to this modality of, of, of commons uh, approach to technology and, and, and collaboration online. Funding. We, we are uh, uh, designing a match funding uh, uh, program for Commons Collaborative Initiative. Match funding means that uh, the city council puts something and then the, um, through Goteo, a, a crowd, crowdfunding platform, you have to match the other part. So if you get 2,000 through Goteo, the city council gives you another 2,000. No? There is also experimentation through piloting about how far basic income, a project about experimenting with basic income in some neighborhoods, and the local currency might actually facilitate the growing of the common collaborative economy in those neighborhoods. We are providing also a, a physical infrastructure to the Fab City program, Ateneus de Fabricación that are physical spaces for collaborative fabrication, and the Maker District in Pobleno. Uh, this has uh, possibly the more, uh, more interesting a measure being developed is the formation entrepreneurs programs, specific incubating programs for these initiatives, uh, call it La Comunificadora, which it was a, 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 a program of three months supporting uh, 15 initiatives to help them grow uh, uh, based on commons collaborative economy. And it was not any kind of entrepreneurship, but very specific with a commons perspective. Last, we, in, in this frame of building an alternative to privatization and public commons partnership, uh, um, we are trying to see how to connect WIFINET wireless uh, community, which is the worldwide largest wireless community that started here in Catalonia, with the uh, fighting for the digital exclusion in the city. Also, we have a experimental program of facilitating the reuse 
of an, an, unutilized resources in the city council, starting with, with computers. So we are putting in a collaborative use uh, uh, computers and all the other technological infrastructure by the, by the city. Uh, uh, just want to end up uh, inviting you to participate into the, the ones who are here, the Procommons event. Also, the cities that are here to consider this uh, Procommons declaration with 120 policy uh, recommendation, and to see that here with the Commons Collaborative Economy, we have a great opportunity to actually scale the, the democratic economy uh, in the city. But there are also uh, uh, many uh, um, uh, challenges through the corporate adoption of this, so we have also to have a strategy to uh, stop the, 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 um, the cooptation of this uh, energy growing. Thank you. is Anne Sophie Olmos. She's the councillor. Uh, she's the councillor for public management and procurement from the Grenoble City Council. Thank you. Bonjour à tous. Uh, alors, je suis pas venu uh, avec une présentation uh, ou des images, mais je suis venu avec mon traducteur uh, personnel parce que mon anglais est très très mauvais. Donc, veuillez m'excuser. I'm not here with. Uh, uh a PowerPoint, but with my professional traductor. Sorry for my English. Tout d'abord, je voudrais vous dire d'où on parle. Grenoble, on est une ville avec un un fort historique sur les communs. Donc, on n'appelait pas commun à l'époque. C'est la première ville de France où nous avons remunicipalisé l'eau. C'est une des premières villes à avoir vu naître les mutuelles, et c'est la ville qui a vu naître les premières copropriétés. Uh, from where I talk, um, I'm deputy mayor of Grenoble, the first city in France which uh, municipalized the water, where we were created the mutual insurances um, and the co-ownership, the historical context of the city. Ensuite, on a au niveau de notre uh, groupe politique qui avons été élu en 2014 uh, une particularité uh, du commun, cet ADN un peu de, du commun qui a été conduit par euh, le maire Éric Piolle. On a construit un projet municipal en commun, c'est-à-dire que euh, un mouvement citoyen a aggloméré des partis politiques et de là a émergé un projet qui a été vraiment construit en commun et c'est ce programme aujourd'hui que nous essayons de suivre. Et dans ce projet, il y a un fort axe sur la démocratie participative et c'est à partir de cet axe de démocratie participative Que nous avons tiré l'axe sur les communs. Uh, the communs are the DNA of uh, our political group, led by uh, our mayor Eric Piolle. Uh, is the basis of the municipal project, uh, with a big target uh, about uh, participative uh, democracy. Uh, she also says that uh, the uh, political group of Grenoble uh, was based uh, from citizens' movement. Ensuite, dans les premières mesures qu'on a mis en place euh, pendant notre mandat, on a décidé de libérer l'espace public pour pouvoir en faire un commun. Mais avant d'en faire un commun, il fallait vraiment le libérer de tout ce qui est euh, privatisation de l'espace public. Et du coup, notre, une des premières mesures a été de supprimer la publicité euh, de l'espace public. Uh, one our uh, first decision uh, of the city council was to liberate, uh, to create a free public space. Uh, uh, free from uh, privatization, and so to put uh, hand of uh, advertising in the public space. Nous avons d'autres mesures euh, dans le domaine culturel, comme euh, le festival du street art, qui veut sortir la culture des musées pour vraiment euh, l'ouvrir à tout le monde. Donc, on a ce festival de street art, et on a aussi euh, des dispositifs de jardinons nos rues qu'on retrouve de partout dans le monde, mais qui marchent vraiment très très fort. Et ces dispositifs, on essaye de les rendre exponentiels avec une journée participative qui s'appelle la belle saison, où les habitants viennent euh, nettoyer la rue avec les services euh, publics, les agents de la municipalité. 
Donc pour nettoyer l'espace public, jardiner, échanger les bonnes pratiques, se retrouver ensemble et créer du lien social. Uh, after that, we made uh, other decisions. Uh, first, to uh, get out culture from museum with uh, the creation of a, a street art festival. Uh, then to develop a participative uh, gardens and to uh, make possible the, to uh, empowerment the more and more citizens uh, how to uh, citizens invest the public space um, with uh, a big event called uh, La Belle Saison uh, when uh, people clean the city with uh, the public administration and uh, uh, make uh, a social link uh, and uh, share with uh, each other about uh, public space. Ensuite, nous avons réfléchi à comment emmener cette euh, démocratie locale euh, vers le commun. Et il y a un outil qui nous sert beaucoup aujourd'hui, ce sont les budgets participatifs. On encourage les porteurs de projets à se regrouper euh, entre projets similaires. Chaque projet doit avoir un objectif de création de liens sociaux. Et en même temps, euh, on essaye aussi d'encourager les gens à former des collectifs de gestion communautaire des projets qui seront mis en place. Et comme exemple, on peut dire qu'on euh, a des demandes de poulaillers partagés, de composteurs de quartier et également beaucoup de demandes sur du jardin partagé. Um, we create a participatory budgeting uh, in order to develop sharing projects, uh, to create social links, uh, to train the management groups, And for instance, uh, uh, mm, mm, because of the participatory uh, budgeting, uh, we made a sharing uh, hen house, uh, gallinero, uh, a sharing uh, compost bin uh, in neighborhood, and sharing gardens. Donc, pour conclure sur cet aspect-là, pour nous, notre équipe municipale, la ville doit avoir un rôle de facilitateur. Des, in des initiatives citoyennes, d'accélérateurs, et également on a beaucoup de demandes pour animer les réseaux. Il y a beaucoup d'initiatives citoyennes, mais elles ont vraiment besoin d'être mises en réseau entre chaque ville de notre métropole et déjà au sein de la ville. Uh, our municipality, our city council, uh, wants to facilitate the citizens' ideas and initiatives and organizes networks, networks inside the city, but also with the other city in the same area. Du coup, là, on a vu l'aspect euh, comment la ville peut encourager. Maintenant, on va voir l'aspect comment, la, comment on arrive à renforcer les initiatives qui, elles, naissent du terrain et des citoyens. Et pour cela, euh, on a souhaité participer à une initiative qui s'appelle l'Assemblée des communs, qui a été euh, pensé par un Belge qui s'appelle Michel Bowens. Donc on a parlé d'Elinor Ostrom, euh, de Benclair. Maintenant, on peut parler de Michel Bowens en Belgique, qui pousse aussi vraiment ces initiatives de commun. Et donc, on a décidé de mettre en place cette Assemblée des communs. Donc la ville est un partenaire comme un autre, au même niveau que différents collectifs comme Nuit Debout. Euh, on a le réseau de l'économie sociale et solidaire, la monnaie locale, plusieurs associations. Uh, we saw how the city can facilitate uh, this uh, participative projects. So now we see uh, how uh, the city can organize the commons. And uh, based on the idea of uh, Michael Borens in Belgium, uh, the city helps to create a, a commons assembly. The city just is one partner of this assembly uh, with other partners uh, of the civil society, like uh, Nuit Debout. Uh, No, if you know what is New Dubu in France, um, with the local currency, uh, with many other actors. Cette assemblée des communs est constituée de quatre groupes un groupe sur les communs urbains, un groupe sur les communs euh, ressources naturelles où on va retrouver l'eau, l'énergie, euh, un groupe sur le bien-être et la santé, et un groupe également sur les communs de la connaissance, euh, tout ce qui est open data, euh, voilà, la culture. Et son rôle, ça va être de valoriser toutes ces initiatives société civile ou même des initiatives du monde privé, parce que dans le monde privé, on trouve également des, des entreprises sous forme de coopératives, ce qu'on appelle en France les SIC, qui encouragent la gestion avec les usagers, le monde privé, les institutions 
Et ce genre d'initiative peut aider petit à petit à euh, transformer euh, le privé euh, comme euh, le privé qu'on a du mal à accepter et qui va à l'encontre des initiatives citoyennes. Pour nous, c'est vraiment une forme hybride à encourager. Um... We have four thematic groups uh, into the Commons Assembly. One uh, about uh, urban com uh, commons, another one about uh, natural commons, uh, the third with about uh, behavior and health, uh, and uh, the, the fourth uh, about open data and knowledge. Uh, we want to, uh, to be careful to, to share with uh, everyone with uh, all initiatives uh, of civil society and also private Uh, initiatives, uh, for example, the company of sharing cars uh, in, in the city, to uh, uh, try to transform the private sectors uh, uh, to uh, enter in the logical of the commons. On a euh, un objectif de démocratisation des biens communs également dans cette assemblée des communs. Et là, on essaye de retravailler la question de la remunici remunicipalisation de l'eau. Euh, pour nous, cette question-là, elle a déjà plus de 20 ans et l'eau aujourd'hui est gérée sous un modèle public avec un comité des usagers. Mais notre souci, en fait, aujourd'hui, c'est comment euh, continuer cette bonne gestion. Plus ça va, moins les gens sont sensibilisés à cet avantage, en fait. Donc on a aussi un objectif de garder cette sensibilisation forte pour que ce, cette bonne gestion commune puisse continuer. The, the, the main uh, target of the uh, uh, Commons Assembly is to democratize uh, the Commons goods. Uh, first, uh, uh, we uh, begin with uh, the municipalization of water. It's a story in Grenoble of uh, 20 years of uh, municipalization. Uh, but now we see that uh, the people are not involved in the gestion, in the management of the water every day. So we try to to make uh, them a more actor of the, the management of water, of public water. Bon, pour conclure, euh, cette Assemblée des communs, pour nous, elle doit vraiment avoir un rôle d'information pour bien faire le lien entre la société civile, les initiatives privées, euh, les bonnes initiatives privées, entre guillemets, et euh, l'institution. Et du coup, on a ce rôle d'information, mais également, on souhaite avoir un rôle de formation, parce que c'est aussi par l'éducation populaire qu'on va arriver à sensibiliser le plus de personnes. Et après, il y a ce rôle de réseau auquel on participe aujourd'hui en étant invité ici, un réseau au niveau international, européen, mais également un réseau au niveau de chacun de nos pays. Um... Our main role uh, of the Commons Assembly is to inform, to communicate uh, about uh, what is made, uh, but also to, uh, to, to train uh, the people uh, to be part of the decision pr process. And uh, the, the final uh, target is to develop networks uh, in our country, but also international and European uh, network like uh, we do uh, today. Merci. inspiration and uh, on, on, the, on the policies that really we can develop in our municipalities and from our commons groups and now we have some time like to of course like for debate and dialogue with uh, the panelists and here with among all of us so I guess we have like 15 or at least 20 minutes like to do this this conversation uh, so if you have some questions some comments and then yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> we'll begin this way and then we'll go there yeah okay it will begin there and then we'll go, and then we'll go this way. no no mic <laughs> loud <laughs> Je ne sais pas ce que vous dites, mais c'est pas... 
tout parfait, c'est pas tout merveilleux. Souvent, il y a les gens qui parlent plus fort que les autres, qui enfin, dans tous les trucs participatifs. Comment on invite ceux, ceux qui n'osent pas à être aussi participants dans le processus Et notamment sur le risque des communs numériques. Parce qu'il y a beaucoup de lobbies effectivement pour les insérer. Parce qu'il y a beaucoup d'argent à se faire. Société qui ont envie de mettre un petit peu d'investissement sur ce genre de choses. Est-ce que c'est -ce ça que derrière il faut que ça Elle a lancé quelque chose, elle a, elle a travaillé, euh, enfin elle a mm -hmm. entretenu Wikipédia. On prend plus de questions là Vous et vous Ah, bien. Merci aux panélistes. que l'économie collaborative, l'économie des communs et l'économie post-capitaliste. Je ne vais pas parler de tout 
créer de nouvelles formes d'organisation. Ce n'est pas forcément des nouvelles institutions, c'est juste une nouvelle manière de s'organiser. Dites-vous ou non but not only with uh, through technologies. I, I saw with uh, our experiment that uh, um, it's important to, um, to work on literacy. Uh, I mean, for example, in Wikipedia. Uh, we use Wikipedia a lot uh, in workshops, uh, but uh, Wikipedia was not the subject. Uh, we work on the, the story of the area, the, the, the common narrative uh, of the area, and we ask ourselves, uh, how can we speak about that uh, through technologies? And we started to, to, to understand if the way Wikipedia uh, tells these stories is the good way. Who writes? Uh, f f girls, men? Uh, what, is the, what is it in this page? Do, do, are we able to speak about conflict? Because uh, in the area we're working, Uh, there are many conflicts between uh, the, the city hall and the citizens uh, about migrants and everything. So, is this uh, uh, story exist on Wikipedia? So, uh, it's this work that is really close to people and to their own history. It's a way to uh, to to create a new space to to uh, ask questions about these issues uh, through technologies. But it's not. Uh, Uh, the, the goal, the aim, to use the, this technology. But it, in this case, I, I think uh, uh, technology is a new opportunity to ask this question. So I try to inverse the, 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 the question. So it's another way to uh, ask uh, urban commons governance issues. Sí, eh, I'm going to answer two issues, one on, on the, la the last one, on, um, yeah, I, I didn't mention that because uh, from the Barcelona perspective, uh, there are two issues. The first one is what you said, being brave enough and, and having the political will of, um, because there are two questions here. The first one is if you just want to recognize and kind of informally safeguard those uh, spaces, those, new, those institutions that, are, that were actually occupied illegally or like Patio Maravillas. Uh, and, and then it, this, it's just a question of political will. But if you want to uh, offer them a way of legalizing that and guaranteeing that, and the, the, the starting point of that is that the community wants to be legalized. That's, that's one question. If the community wants to be legalized, uh, being legally recognized as the um, manager, or the, I don't know, uh, there are ways. Legally, there are ways. Uh, there has to be a political will. There has to. You have to be brave enough to confront uh, the public opinion and, and, and mass media who are going to say you are legalizing Ill uh, illegal uh, spotters. Uh, and um, the easiest way is to constitute an uh, association, but, but there is another one. There is a law, I'm not a, I'm not a, <laughs> a legal expert, but there is a law, uh, La Ley 
1998, de 13 de julio, eh, 29, eh, 1998, eh, that acknowledges that eh, af, eh, sí, ¿no? ¿Puedo decirlo en español? grupos de afectados, uniones sin personalidad o patrimonios independientes o autónomos pueden ser titulares de derechos y cap tienen capacidad de obrar con la administración. There is a, there is a, a law that, eh, which was made, for example, it was used on eh, the, los contenciosos, the conflicts with the affected people by eh, las preferentes, the banking mm, abuses. Yeah. And eh, there is a sentence of the um, Tribunal Super, Su, Supremo of uh, first, uh, 5th of March 2014, people is, is going away because of that, but there is, that says that but you need to develop a law that can be a regional or a state law that actually regulates that. Vale? This is to say, if you, if you get the Generalitat de Catalunya or uh, the Comunidad de Madrid <laughs> to regulate To regulate that, eh, you can do it. So there is a, there is a path of, of, of doing it. Eh, but the, but the, first, the first question is the political way, the political uh, will of both sides. Otherwise, it's just a way of um, recognizing and just uh, informally safeguarding uh, those spaces. Eh, on... Uh, on how the, 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 com, the, the commons economy can uh, challenge capitalism and, and especially, I think they're just one piece of the whole puzzle. I mean, it's not the alternative. I don't see it as the alternative. I see it as an alternative that actually poses some, uh, arises uh, the conflict between uh, profit and uh, economic sustainability in terms of um, lucro y sostenibilidad económica, ¿no? Mm. Eh, saying, well, uh, economy can be e economically sustainable, but it doesn't have to have uh, profit, and therefore uh, puts over the table another way, not just the third way, but another way of, of dealing with economic uh, dynamics. Eh, and takes some piece of the cake that was actually before, that was actually in hands of uh, multinational corporations. Dealing with urban commons in Barcelona will take part of the cake that was in, in the hands of the um, corporations. Mm, not much, but it's a first state for uh, a, a, a commons management of water that is actually now in hands of multinational corporations, of an energy, of other services that are a big part of the cake that are in hands of the of the multinational corporations. So it's a step towards that, but it's not, for me, it's not the alternative. The alternative is a whole sum of, uh, of different uh, di new dynamics, uh, cooperatives, um, well, <coughs> many other things. I don't know if I, I didn't answer, but just a comment. I've got the same thing as. <laughs> you want to answer some? Yeah. Yeah. Um, regarding the question of openness, um, so I, I think um, the open open organizing basically reproduce the inequalities in society. So if there is people who has who doesn't have time to participate, in, we know this type of problematic. Doesn't have time to participate in assemblies, they will not participate. So open processes tend to uh, uh, reproduce inequalities in society. And this is something we have to be aware of and, and as collectives try to put uh, 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 solutions in order to cover that. And this happened the same when we, regarding the, the, the case of uh, Wikipedia that you were referring to, like Wikipedia also reproduced certain inequalities in the society, like for example, <coughs> who participate uh, tend, tend, tend to be more educated. Or, or, or tend to be the educated people in society. So, uh, and in this we have to be aware and consider which are the conditions, which are the democ 
which are the conditions that assure that open uh, organizing has a democratic effect. With very unequal societies, open processes might, might be worse. No? But uh, regarding the specific case of Wikipedia, I think you referred to a type of problematic of the um, uh, corporate uh, use of Wikipedia for bringing their own discourse, like the, 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 the manipulation of Wikipedia by Coca-Cola, for example. And that was uh, uh, something worried the community a lot. Uh, but I would say uh, the dynamic and the rules of Wikipedia uh, solve quite well that problem. It's not that, in, that there are not cases in which the, there are problematic, but in general, I think this problem that was very problematic, that was worrying, very much worrying the community three years ago, more or less, it has been solved quite well. The problem that I find more problematic in Wikipedia is the question of gender. Uh, uh, in the sense of, at this moment, there is a 30% of Wikipedians being women, and the content in Wikipedia tend to be very uh, uh, unequally covered regarding women's figures, regarding a gender perspective in the, in the articles. And on this, the community is aware and is putting like, efforts in order to solve it, but it's a reality, it's a limitation. So uh, we have to be very aware on this and, and be very particularly present that, that the commons in general are very bad on gender. Uh, also, the free and open source software projects, they have a 1.1% woman, while Microsoft of proprietary communities have 30%. So the private way of producing software is more inclusive with women <coughs> than the commons. So we have to be very aware of this uh, problematic of gender and uh, uh, in order to actually provide uh, uh, norms and rules as part of the communities for uh, uh, recovery. Regarding the challenges by the corporation, uh, that you that uh, Sol was referring to, like how t I think the main mechanism uh, in which corporates are uh, uh, enclosing the commons are through these channels. One is re regarding the regulation, another one is the access to funding, and the third one is regarding awareness. So regarding to funding, the, regarding regulation. I think we need to uh, have a parallel strategy of gaining economical power through gaining this kind of much more parts of the economy being developed in a commons-oriented modality. In Barcelona, for example, the 7% 7, 7 of the city GDP is based on cooperatives. So what do we do in order to be the 30% like in Bologna or the 60% like in New Zealand? That's something we have to have strategies as as economic movements in order to expand. And this is why I think Commons Collaborative Economy is an possibility for the scalability of this type of democratic economy. But what happened is that the regulation, uh, it, does, it penalizes these modalities of economies. So we need to uh, do in parallel gaining economical power with gaining political power and occupy the, the political institutions in order to stop the regulations that, does, that penalize us. And this refers to uh, also the question of corruption, the question of uh, uh, regulation very much uh, connected to the interests of certain uh, corporations. Also the necessity to develop a global, uh, city level is very important, but at global institutions that assure that the multinationals, uh, if they do tax abortion, they, they, that they cannot do it, you know? Or, the, or, the, or los paraisos fiscales? The, Tax seven, like this guy, at this high level, global uh, 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 event is where many of the, the that is reinforcing more the power of, of in, in, uh, 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 big corporations being able to gain the economical uh, uh, field. Second, regards to at the judicial level, I think we need to develop a a judicial framework of the commons adapted to this modality as connected to Naples. Uh, also, we need new legal forms. Cooperative laws, for example, tend to not adapt well with platform cooperatives and to new modalities of collaborative uh, production. Like, I think it might be also the case of, of what um, Yolanda has presented, that there are not legal forms that represent well certain modalities of citizens' uh, 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 production. Uh, and um, uh, at the funding level, without 
a reform of the international uh, uh, financial system, we have a structural mm, uh, uh, elements that doesn't allow uh, alternative economy to grow. Because access to funding is being very much uh, uh, rejected to these type of modalities. We need an ethical international funding uh, uh, mode that uh, doesn't penalize not access to funding to these modalities of economy. I'm not going to go into detail, but actually uh, cap uh, international capital risk uh, force, if you want to have international capital, you have to change your governance. You have to be a startup, you know? And, and, and that, that's a trade, you know? Uh, and, and we have to actually provide other access of, of, of funding to this. And then at the media level, as far as we don't get more power at the media level, that we control more, much, not we, that there is more democratic media. It's not about we. Like, there is a truly media uh, environment in which it's not like the main newspapers are not being co-opted by the economical interest. It would be very, very different, difficult to actually achieve uh, awareness, and, and, and uh, which is one of the problematic of these models, that, that the people don't know them. You know, there is not awareness about them. Uh, so I think at these levels, at policy level, at judicial level, at international capital level, and at the media level, is the ways in which we might need to gain uh, in order to, uh, to stop the corporate domination of the economical uh, system. Okay. So the problem of the tragedy of the commons of Ardin start from the appropriation of common land and the problem of openness. So this is a central question. But I think that open doesn't mean without no rules and no control. This is what Ardin say, but it's not true. And for example, uh, and I don't speak about this in Wikipedia, when you uh, cancel a voice, you have a debate. So more is the large the community, more large is the, con the control, and so you can uh, make social rules, because before that um, of legal rule, you have social rule. Now, if I want to stand here, uh, you say, oh, but you cannot do that. But there is no uh, legal uh, uh, thing. But it, it is a social rule that I don't speak here. So we, may, we have to make broader community to make, first of all, social rule, new rules. Second question, how to deal with the institution? All right. Yes, uh, first of all, obviously, uh, there is a political choice of the institution. But it depends a lot of what you ask. And here, there is a big question. I, 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 I don't know if uh, we ask to be uh, legalized, because uh, it's a theoretical problem. So I am a political philosopher and philosopher of law. No law uh, comes from legality. Legality uh, starts from a violation. It's always like that. Think about Rosa Parks. Think about the occupation of land. Think about slavery, right? For example, Giacomo, there are a lot of books about this. Giacomo D'Alisa, that is here, suggests me uh, a, a book that is called Property Outlaws. That is an interesting uh, book that speaks about this. So uh, we want to make legal what it's right and it's not legal. But we want to do this, and this is the dialogue with the administration, in a possible way, because this is true. Because when there is a, a, a funzionario amministrativo, a, a, a right, public service, that uh, sign this act, he has a responsibility. So be honest and mutualistic with him too. Uh, and speak with the public officer more than with the political uh, officer. Because political officer make you happy and go to the election. Uh, people that uh, work in the administration, not. So in this dialogue, you can invent something that are really interesting. Uh, and uh, for example, we have that not only this in Naples. Uh, I don't sell, I don't, there are about uh, eight experience in Italy that are writing their uh, 
uh, civic and urban use uh, declaration. And in Palermo, the City Council in April have done an uh, administrative act that starts to recognize this. So is a marea from this point of view. And uh, this is uh, the difference between uh, an organization and a new institution. We ask a shared responsibility with the public because uh, we must to give a role to the public. Say, all right, you do this and I do that, the community do that. For example, fire prevention plant. It's really difficult for all private people to make this. Pri fire prevention plant is a thing that have to make the public. So we can arrange a way to do this together. You have no money, I put people, you pay only the insurance and we start to work together. But uh, this is the difference. Uh, and other things, you must say to public, and this is a, a challenge for us, for an occupation, you are part of the guarantee bodies. This is another different things. If I do an organization, I, no, I don't want no one that make me uh, the guarantee bodies from, uh, I don't know, the public. But if I do an institution, I have to say that there is a member, for example, of the guarantee bodies that come from there. Not to control what I do, but if I respect the rules. If I say that everybody can speak, now he has the possibility to say, all right, it's true or not, it's true. And I make you a concrete example of difference between organization and institution. I uh, am from Asilo Filangiri. Asilo Filangiri is a new institution. Here I speak as Massa Critica. Massa Critica is a political organization. Not all people in Asilo are in Massa Critica. Uh, there is a small part of people uh, in Asilo of Massa Critica. And when I'm here, I don't speak about Asilo. I speak more politically level with Massa Critica because we have uh, anarchists, we have uh, other people. And, <laughs> and this is the way that, and I finish, the new agora that create new community, but it's not organic community. It's not a single community. These are agora places where communities create itself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they tell us we have to leave because there's another panel. If you have just a very concrete question, very, very, very concrete question, we have two questions. But but we stay here. For three days, no, <laughs> we I mean, speak. We can continue later, but it's, it's a very specific <laughs> question, yeah? Yeah. The yeah. question for the first, uh, about Yolanda. I'm, I'm a human rights defender, and I defend the rights of people, uh, migrants, but also the detention center. And uh, so, we are talking about uh, part of the population who has no access to uh, education, um, housing, employment. Yeah, very short answers, and then, and then maybe you can continue it outside, yeah? yeah? Or so you want to contact We, we so cannot guarantee what you were 
asking for, but we have, we have, we have strategies in terms of within the criteria uh, that the municipality should follow to decide uh, which community or which organization should manage a space. There are some criteria, for example, uh, if, if, if that proposal uh, 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 goes, goes beyond the actual inequality in participation in public spaces now. Uh, if, if, there are if they have strategies to open the governance spaces to uh, minority communities. If, Claro, o sea, es lo que decía, se pueden poner estrategias encima de la mesa para favorecer eso, pero eso tiene que venir de las propuestas. O sea, nosotros no definimos qué proyectos y qué propuestas en cada esto, pero se abren... Yo sigo hablando, seguimos. Es un pleasure, es un gran interés.